Hey, what's up everybody? Haskins here with another awesome build tutorial for you today. Yes, I will be showing you every single step of the way on how to bring this beautiful center console boat into your LEGO Fortnite world. Now I am showcasing this using the Beachy Boulevard set. However, you can absolutely build this same design with three parts in the game. I'm also issuing a challenge to all you builders out there to where the first 20 people to join our Discord server and directly send me photos of this build completed will be entered into a 1200 V-Buck giveaway. Also, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe with notifications on so you never miss another tutorial from me and make sure you check out all the other ones I've already done. You can further declare your support by using creator code Haskins in the item shop. Thanks for tuning in, let's get into the build. All right, so before we get the build started, you're gonna wanna find a nice open area because this boat is kind of large and we wanna have space to lift this thing up and get it in the water once we're finished. Now, the first step we're gonna do here is we're gonna go over to our dynamic foundations under toys. And we're gonna grab this eight by 24 by two, which is the medium dynamic foundation. And we're gonna put three of these in length. And then at this point, you can do one of two things. If you have the beachy boulevard set, you can actually come over to your supports and grab these beachy beam threes. That's what we'll be using in this tutorial. However, if you don't have those, you can use a combination of these rustic beams and any of the floor pieces that I'll be showing you here in a moment can be used as long as they're the same dimensions. Now, we're gonna do nine of these in length in total. So that would be two, we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and that's gonna get us all the way across all three of these dynamic foundations. And we're gonna just put one more row on this side. Now for this next step, we're gonna head over into our floor pieces where we're gonna grab any 16 by two by one thin floor piece. We're just gonna simply get this thing up here. We're gonna line it up flush with the edge and we're gonna move it forward two spaces and then we're gonna drop it down. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And as we make our way towards the back, we're gonna place three pieces and then we're gonna grab some smaller pieces here. We're gonna grab the 12 by two by one and we're gonna then grab the six by two by ones. And to finish it off, we're gonna do an eight by two by one. Now we're gonna repeat the same pattern on the other side. So again, it's gonna be three of the 16 by two by ones. And then we're gonna move over to the 12 by two by one. Then an eight by two by one. And lastly, a six by two by one. So now that we have those pieces good and lined up the way we want, again, making sure that this front end is two nudges off the front, we're gonna take the same pieces, we're just gonna stack it, we're gonna move forward two, and then we're gonna move over one. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So we're just gonna snap it in, we're gonna move it off the edge, just like that. And then the one in the middle that we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a smaller piece up the middle. And the reason for this is we do not want the weight of this boat to be extremely heavy because if the heavier the boat, the harder this thing is gonna have moving through the water. So when we can get away with using the smaller pieces at the front of the nose, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take this six by two by one, and we're gonna line it up at the front end, and then we're gonna also take this and nudge this off two spaces. Now, if you come towards the front here, you can take a look. This is the pattern in which you're gonna to have to be operating with as you continue to build this out. Now, the one thing that's important here is I don't recommend continuing to build this moving forward until you've actually completed each row and made sure that they're all lining up towards the back. Now, pay close attention because if you notice, every time we're gonna be nudging these forward, it's gonna create one additional piece that's going to be hanging off the back edge. So we need to account for that by using a combination of different pieces. So the way this is gonna work is not an exact science, but we're gonna snap these in until we get pretty close to the back end. Now in this case, we're gonna still be using the 16 by two by one, but you can see when you get here, it hangs off completely. We're gonna to have to shift over to a smaller piece. Now, in this case for the second row, we're gonna use a 12 by two by one, and we're just gonna snap that in. So it helps to remember the piece lengths that you use. So in this case for the second row, again, it's gonna be two or three of these beachy thin floors, which is the 16 by two by one. And then you can finish this off with a 12 by two by one. 
All right, so for the next layer of this boat, we're gonna go back to our 16 by two by one floor piece. We're gonna just make sure that it's resting directly on top of the piece that we already have down. Now, sometimes you do have to wiggle it around a bit because it doesn't like to sit on top of the piece. It actually sits inside of it. So once you have it lined up in green like that, we're gonna nudge again forward two spaces. And this time we're actually going to move outward a space. And the easiest way to get the other piece set is just snapping it into the existing one up top here and just moving it over until we're hanging off the edge one space like that. So then once we have that down, we wanna make sure we fill out this little gap in the middle here. We don't wanna keep lining pieces up on the front there because it's going to have little holes in the front and we don't want it to look like that. So now we're gonna go back to our eight by two by one and we're gonna snap this in until we reach the front of the pieces it snapped into. And the same thing like all the other patterns so far is we're gonna nudge it forward two spaces. So then we're gonna knock that down and then we're gonna put one more right next to it. Now the combination of pieces that you're gonna need to make sure that this layer lines up is going to be two 16 by two by ones. I'm sorry, three 16 by two by ones. And then we're gonna grab a eight by two by one and then finish it off with a six by two by one. And just repeat that pattern on the opposite side. Now this next layer is going to be a little bit different and it's going to continue getting a bit different as we work our way up because it's starting to become a lot wider. Now we will follow some of the exact same techniques that we've done for the shape of the bow by placing down the 16 by two by one and we're gonna nudge it forward two spaces and over one. And then we're gonna do the same thing where we snap it in and just have it hang off the edge one. But now you're starting to have a lot more area to cover up the middle here. So the way we're gonna do this is go back to these eight by two by one pieces and we're gonna nudge it forward one, two, just like that. And then we're gonna do another one here where we're gonna snap in, line it up, and we're gonna go one, two, and just make sure that it's lined up with the piece across from it. Now, we don't want the nose to be very, very boxy. So at this point, we're gonna need this next piece to actually hang off even further because we want the front end to start coming and creating a point. If it's very boxy up the front, it's gonna look like a pontoon boat, and trust me, that's not what you want for a center console. So now we can go back to the eight by two by one. We're gonna snap it in, we're gonna nudge it forward two spaces. Now you can start to see the nose form shaping here. So again, just like we've done before, we're gonna use a combination of the different floor piece dimensions to make sure that we line up perfectly in the back. All right, so you're starting to see a pattern here, but trust me, you still wanna make sure you follow every step through the video, otherwise you're gonna end up with little weird gaps and holes in your boat. So now this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna line it up again, just like we have been with the outer edge. We're gonna go one, two forward and one to the side. Same thing here again, we're gonna nudge this over until we're hanging off one. But now we're gonna have these other little gaps to have to take care of here. And now as the nose is moving forward, we need to make sure that every piece we lay down in the center part is going to be the perfect spacing to get that nice rounded nose on the boat. Otherwise it's gonna look like a square. Like I said earlier, we don't want that. So we're gonna go back to eight by two by one. You wanna line up with that one and then we're gonna move forward two spaces just like that. And then we're gonna snap this one in and move over in the exact same position on the opposite end. And we're gonna snap this in and we're gonna move forward here until we're lined up with the front part that's hanging out, just like this. And then we're gonna nudge it forward too from there. Now at this point, you're gonna grab the other one and drop it in just like that. And now you're starting to see the shape of this nose coming together. Now we'll make our way back up top. And again, the most important thing is do not continue to build up the layer of the front of the boat till we put these pieces in. So we're gonna grab the 16 by two by one and we're gonna put three of those in. And then to finish it off, we're gonna go to the 12 by two by one and then the six by two by one. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now we're on layer six where we're gonna go back to 16 by two by one, line it up with the piece and then one, two, and then over one. And we're just gonna snap it in and move out just like this. Now you're gonna start to deal with that uh, more difficult pattern of filling this stuff in in the center here. Because if you make one mistake on either side and you're not checking to make sure everything's evenly spread out, once you get towards the back, you're gonna start to deal with uneven spacing and this back end won't be flush. So make sure you just continue to check all your spaces as you move forward. 
And now this time, we're gonna line it up with this part of the boat, but we're gonna nudge it forward too. And then we're gonna do this and line it up on the opposite side. And then we're gonna snap this in and we're gonna go forward too. And then line up on the other side and then snap in and we're gonna do forward too again. Now you're starting to see that shape come together. Now we're gonna do two more layers. So we're gonna have one where it's gonna be a little bit more squared up off the front and then we're gonna do one more to create this kind of rounded edge around the nose. And then from there, we're gonna start doing a little bit of more of a stack pattern. So we're gonna continue what we've been doing so far by lining these up, one, two, and then nudge over. We're gonna do the same thing over here. And just continue to build that pattern I've been showing you for the layer that's opposite of the one where we're creating the rounded nose. All right, so now we should have eight layers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We wanna make sure that there are eight on both sides and then just come check the front to make sure that all of the spacing is looking exactly like you're seeing here. You have a nice consistent pattern moving up through to the front of the nose and you can drop down and start to see this thing coming together. Now from here, building up, we're gonna stack a few of these layers on top to give it a more realistic boat shape. Now, once we've finished our eighth layer, we are now going to do a double stack. And what I mean by that is rather than repeating the pattern of alternating the spacing on it, we're actually just going to layer these pieces right on top of one another. So the easy way to do that is snap in your center one flush with the one that's already underneath it. And then you can just snap them in like this and go nudge back two spaces, back two, and then we're gonna do back two again, and then just do the same thing for the other side. And then before you move forward, just drop down and make sure that all of those pieces are lined up as intended. And then we can make our way back up on top of the boat where we're gonna to start to build our layers moving back towards the rear of the boat. Now, once you've checked the front end and everything's good, we're gonna go back to the 16 by two by one thin floor pieces, and then we're just gonna line these up as well. This next part is also gonna be another double stack, but rather than putting them right on top of the ones below it, we're gonna follow the same nudge forward two and out one pattern that we've been doing throughout this entire video. And so we're just gonna follow those same steps where we line things up, nudge it forward too, and then just start to build towards the nose of the boat. And again, important on this layer here is that once you get to the center, it's actually gonna have two pieces connected. You're not gonna nudge that next one out. And if you make a mistake like me, punch this piece out. You don't wanna swing that pickaxe because it can be catastrophic. Um, but then yeah, just continue this pattern moving back towards that other piece. And then you're gonna build out the right and left sides. And then I'm gonna show you, you're just gonna actually stack another layer of these pieces on top of the existing one. Now from here, just go ahead and finish out the right and left side stack.
Now for the next layer, we're not gonna stack on top like we've done the previous steps. We're actually gonna do like what we did earlier on in the build, where we're gonna line it up with the existing piece underneath it, just like this to where the front ends are matching. And we're gonna nudge it forward two spaces and then we're gonna go off to the side one. Now at this point, it's a little too wide to do the snapping technique. So you're just gonna have to come to the other side and manually line this thing up. Again, make sure that the front of the boards are lined up like this, and then you're gonna nudge forward two and then over one. From here, we're gonna repeat the same type of pattern. We're just gonna grab the smaller eight by two by one, and we're gonna line it up with the front end of this and nudge it forward two. And we're just gonna continue to repeat this exact same pattern by snapping in and nudging forward two until we get to this central point here. And then at this point, we're gonna start to nudge back two spaces until we meet with the piece that we originally laid down on the right side. Now, make sure again that all of your spacing and your patterns are exactly even like this, and now you're ready to continue building this next layer all the way towards the back. Now we're going to do the stack pattern. So grab these floor pieces. You can start up the center here and just line them up. And then again, just making sure that once you line up with the central piece, nudge back two and just stack them on the layer underneath it. And the reason for this is you don't want the nose to stick out too far. You wanna have it start to flatten out to look a little bit more realistic. I noticed in my first design, the amount of space that the front end of the nose um, stuck out from the bottom of the boat. It just didn't look the greatest. So I decided to start introducing these stack patterns. I think it looks really nice in the final product. So I hope you like it too. Now, once you've got that nose, again, this is just something I'm gonna say over and over again. Make sure that all of these little step patterns are nice and even with the remaining ones that you've done on the boat. And make sure it's a nice graduated pointy area up front here. And then once you've checked that out, start building out the sides of the boat. Now we're gonna introduce another double stack, but before we begin the stack, we're also gonna go back to the original method of nudging it forward to and out a space, just like that. And do the same thing on the other side. So nudge forward to and out one, and then we're gonna start to build this nose in again by using the smaller pieces. So we're gonna line this bad boy up. And we're gonna go forward two, snap, forward two, snap, forward two. At this point, you should definitely have this pattern down, but again, just make sure you're following along and being very careful as you move through the remaining parts of the build. Now for these next two patterns, we're actually not going to do a stack. We're gonna do individual pieces that are gonna to start to widen out the boat just a tad bit more. So just like we've been doing, we're gonna go back into our floor pieces where we're gonna line these up and we're gonna nudge it out and forward two. Same thing on the other side. I'm realizing I'm saying the same thing over and over again. You guys are probably like, dude, okay, I get it. But again, if you mess up one spot, you're gonna be really mad. So that's why I'm just continuing to explain these steps so that you don't run into the same issues that I did when I built this originally.
Now this next layer, we're gonna follow the original pattern. So it's gonna just be 16 by two by ones where we nudge forward two and out one. This is very, very similar to all the other steps. We're just gonna fill this last part out before we move on to building with some of the actual support pieces. So thanks for sticking around this far. We are getting close to putting this thing in the water and getting our balancing and thrusters going. Now, this next part is for demonstration purposes only. Now, I wanna show this to the folks who are using free parts in the game. So for example, if you use rustic floors for this boat, which is also gonna look pretty good, I'm gonna show you what you're gonna to wanna to do. Now, we're gonna be using the stack pattern. So the last layer that we actually laid down in the previous step, we're just going to stack five of the floor pieces like we've done previously on top. And then what we're gonna do is as we work our way towards the back, we're going to use a combination of the longer and smaller pieces to start stepping down to create that like more realistic boat look where it actually tapers off and gets shorter towards the back end of the boat. Now, don't get worried. You haven't missed anything. I just wanted to get this pattern down before I show you how to do it. So for this part, you're just going to follow the steps I'm going to show you and then just make sure you apply the same stuff I'm showing you on the left to the right side find these beachy beam threes right here and we're going to line it up with the front of the boat and you can see just like we stacked before we're going to line this right up with that plank underneath it and we're going to nudge it forward two spaces and we're going to put one right next to it now we want to follow this exact same pattern that we have here on the other side so bear with me right now because it is a bit confusing and difficult to make sure you keep the pattern consistent on the opposite side now we're gonna talk through how we do it on the left side and once I'm done with the left side, you're just gonna apply the same pattern on the right like you're seeing here right now. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna grab another Beachy Beam 3 and we're going to line it up just like this and we're gonna nudge it back one space. And then for the next block, we're also gonna wanna line it up and just make sure that it's flush on the ground because sometimes these have a tendency to lift up. You don't want that to happen. So line it up and nudge it back one. Now this next group of two that we're going to be doing is gonna be nudging back two spaces, but instead of just doing one wide, we're gonna do two wide. Then we're gonna move one more over here. And now as you can see on the other side, we're going to do a single block here and we're gonna nudge it back one space. Then we're gonna move another one on the side here and this time we're gonna go back two spaces then we're gonna do another grouping of two where we're actually gonna nudge back only one space here. So we're gonna put one more next to it. And then from here, I recommend checking and making sure that the pattern is consistent. Now, as you can see right now, I do have the right and left sides are very consistent. So if you're following this pattern, just make sure that when you do it on the other side, it's the exact same pattern we're following here. Now we're gonna do one more single beachy beam three and in this time, we're actually gonna go back two spaces with this. Then we're gonna put another one where we're just gonna line it up and nudge back one space, followed by another single and two spaces. And then we're gonna nudge this one back one. And we're gonna do another one back and one and mimic that on the other side okay and now the only other thing that you're going to do is we're going to take these pieces again and we're just going to line them up and instead of doing two wide here we're actually going to do one two and three just like that and now you have this front end piece looking pretty good now if you prefer, you can also add a fourth one here. It's really up to personal preference. So let's take a look and see what the fourth one looks like. I actually like that better. So from the front here, you're gonna have actually one, two, three, four additional pieces that we just added in. So now let's just hop back up top here and add another one to this side. Right, at this point, it's probably a good idea to actually break out a wide floor piece. Now you can grab any 16 by 16 by one. I find that if you do have the Durberger restaurant set, this looks awesome with that checkered pattern. 
Now it is a little weird to try to get this in where it needs to go, but you can kind of move this thing around and we want to get it as close to the front of the boat as we can, where it's actually going to fit in. So right here looks good. We just want to make sure that it's all the way against the actual boat uh, edge here itself. And then now you can see there's a perfect square on this side. Now you can fill in that gap by going over to your actual thin floor pieces and we're gonna grab the 16 by two by one and we're just gonna snap that in. You might wanna rotate it though if you're using this to make sure that your pattern uh, is consistent and you don't have those gray boxes or the white boxes lining up directly against each other. Now, once you have those first couple of pieces in, now it's just a matter of taking some of these smaller floor pieces and just different combinations of floor pieces to completely fill out the entire thing until you reach the back of the boat. Now you should have your entire top of your boat completely covered. Now don't pay attention to some of the stuff you're seeing on the sides yet. I'm gonna be covering that in a moment. And then when I'm covering that, you're gonna see some of the floor pieces missing. That just happens when doing some of these tutorials. Just follow the steps moving forward and you're gonna be completely fine. Okay, so to build out this outer part of the boat, all we need to do is go back to the floor pieces that we used originally. In this case, I used the beachy thin floors. So we're gonna actually start to stack these right here like this. Now, after you've got these in and you've got a floor to stand on, we're gonna start finishing out the outer edge of the boat. Now, what I did was I just took the uh, 16 by two by one floor piece. So whatever floor pieces you're using, I actually went ahead and stacked these three in height. So now what we're gonna start doing is we're gonna start to taper this lower as we move towards the back. So we're gonna start with three on each side and just make sure that they're butt right up against these um, support pieces that we put down earlier. And then we're gonna start to build this out towards the back. So now this time we're actually gonna do two. So we're just gonna stack two on top of each other. And then we're gonna do one. And now we're gonna, we're gonna jump down here and take a look and see what that looks like. Now your floors should be looking awesome. We're gonna start building out the back of the boat. We're gonna fill this in by using a combination of different floor pieces. So we're gonna give it 12 by two by one a shot, and then we're gonna grab the six by two by one, and then a eight by two by one. So now we have a nice border around the back of this boat. Now it's time to jump down where we're gonna create like a makeshift swim platform. Now a lot of boats tend to have what's called a swim platform off the back or just a little section for us to really put thrusters on. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab the 16 by two by one thin floor piece. And we're just gonna see how this spans across the back. So what you're gonna do is kind of nudge it until it turns green. You should be able to have this sit right against the back of the boat, but it is a little tricky to get in there. So we're gonna build this down not too low to where we can't get on the inside of the boat because we're definitely going to want to get on the inside but we don't want to build it up so high to where our thrusters are hanging literally off the back edge so once we get it in place i'd say about there is good so that would be one two three four five six seven eight nine ten planks up so we're going to drop that in there and then we're going to grab the smaller thin floor piece which is the six by two by one and we're just gonna drop one just like that. Now we're also gonna build this up a little bit thicker. So we're gonna place another floor piece right on top of the ones that we have. So just make sure that when you do place these, it's lined up perfectly with that outer edge like this. And let's just go ahead and stack one more on there for good measure. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the six by two by one. We're just gonna stack those up until we have three in height. All right, so now this little back bar that you have going on there should be looking like that. Now, that is perfectly fine, but I think what we'll do is we're actually going to extend this one more plank to really make it look good. So we're gonna do one there and one here. We'll leave the bottom one alone. We just want enough surface to where we can actually put the thrusters on this back portion of the boat. So you should be good just like that. 
Now, if you want to, feel free to actually, you could cover this whole back end, but just know that every piece that you add onto this back is going to create some additional weight, and therefore you're gonna need to put even more balloons on it. So we're just gonna stick with this design right now and just leave this back part open. And don't worry too leaving this open because we're gonna need to get in here and start placing our balloons. We wanna make this a floating device without having any balloons up top and have a nice good balance in the water. The other thing too that doesn't matter if you leave this open quite honestly is that most of this is going to be in the water anyway so you're not even going to see this. Don't worry about trying to fill all this out because all you're going to do is add a ton of unnecessary weight. Now that we have this good mount for our thrusters on the back we're just going to evenly spread six large thrusters across the back. Now it's very important to make sure before you get this thing in the water that all of them are evenly spaced out. If you have this spread across the back and it's uneven it's going to actually make the bolt pull to one side or the other and then another thing that i notice it's kind of buggy is that like you can see one of those thrusters looks like it's slightly higher than the other i don't know you can try to knock them off and get them perfectly level but for whatever reason like that just kept happening for me but you should be completely fine now we're just going to leave all of these thrusters alone now they're going to be set to channel 3 by default but we will be using the wrench here shortly to change some of these channels to help this maneuver better so the thruster design i'm showing you right now i didn't come up with until i already had this thing in the water so definitely put these thrusters on in this pattern before you lift the boat into the water now this may appear to be overkill however trust me if you want this thing to move at a decent pace and turn well this is exactly what you're going to need to do so the placement of these thrusters are going to be one on the left and right on the outer side of this. Again, the important part here is to make sure that they're equal distance across from each other. They need to be lined up. Then we're gonna have five additional ones on the back. So we've got two on the left, one in the middle, and then two on the right. And then we're also going to put an additional one on the left of this bar that we put down earlier in the video, and then one on the right. Now I apologize for this camera angle, but the thing that you're gonna wanna do for these is leave all of the five down here for moving forward set to channel three. Then all we're gonna do is we're gonna set this one on the left to channel one, turn off channel three. On this one here, it's gonna be set to channel two. And again, make sure three is off. And then for the one up top here, this is also gonna be set to channel two. And for the one up here, this is going to be set to channel one. Now, what these are gonna do is this is the same channel as the ones up front that are going to be pushing the boat in this direction to the left. And then this is going to push the back of the boat to the right. So they're gonna be working together to move this monster. And the same goes for the ones up top and on the right side. Now, don't pay attention to the balloons just yet. This is just, again, a byproduct of sometimes doing these tutorials. I get ahead of myself. We're just gonna focus on these interior thrusters. Now, I'm in the front of the boat here. This is very important. We're gonna try to mess around with these and get at least two of these larger thrusters on the right and left sides of the boat. Now, what this is going to help us do for now is once we lift up off the ground and start to transfer this into the water, this is going to allow us to turn the directions we need to go. We don't wanna be able to just go in a straight line. So this is a necessary step to get prepared to get the boat in the water. Now, one thing you're gonna need is a wrench, like I mentioned earlier in the video, and that can be crafted using your crafting bench. Now, it's super easy to make that. These are gonna be necessary to independently change the thruster channels on these things. So we're gonna to wanna to set the left side to channel one, make sure you turn off channel three, and then the right side is gonna be set to channel two, and then make sure you also turn off channel three for both of those. All right, so for the most nerve wracking part, we're actually gonna lift off the boat with some balloons and we're gonna get this thing in the ocean. Now, this is very scary when you do it for the first time, but trust me, this should work out just fine. So we're not gonna to be too particular of where we're gonna place a large driver's seat. This is just simply right now so we can control this boat as we take off. And now from here, we're gonna add as many large balloons as we possibly can. Now in this case, I'm only gonna be able to put down seven, so hopefully we're able to lift off 
with just seven balloons now one thing i notice is there are going to be some places where you're unable to place down the balloon so just make sure you kind of maneuver it around a bit and try to do these up the center before you start moving it out towards the sides now i think we're probably going to need a lot more than this so we're just going to continue to add these balloons until we start lifting up now you can see the front end is starting to lift so we're going to start to bring these towards the back a bit and then we're going to have the boat start lifting up now try to get these as evenly balanced as possible and now we're preparing for takeoff when i first did this i was so nervous that the whole thing was going to fall apart but through trial and error you just learn things in this game and i am not really that worried about it now, if you are building this in the middle of like say the grasslands, you're gonna need a lot more than this to actually get this thing into the water. But because we're out on the ocean in on, on the island actually, it's not gonna be as much work. We're gonna drop this in over here. And now once you turn enough, you can start to engage your rear thrusters and start to make way to the ocean. Now, before we let this down into the water, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're in deep enough water to where you're not gonna bottom out. If you bottom out on the land or the sand, like you can see right there, it's gonna break the bottom of the boat and you do not want that to happen. So the way we're gonna get this thing into the water is you can see that the back is lifted slightly higher than the front. We're gonna start to work the middle balloons first because we don't want to have one of the front or back ends just go rushing down. We wanna get it nice and evenly into the water. So I recommend knocking off those two balloons and just like that, she's rested very nicely in our water now we're going to hop into the water and we're going to get rid of these dynamic foundations that we put down initially. The whole purpose of these was so the boat wasn't stuck and attached to the ground. You could actually lift it up like we did with the balloons to get it over into the water. And all we need to do now is attach a large dynamic foundation on the front of the boat here, just like this. Now, the one thing I do want to mention, if you put your boat in the water and it's not leveled out like this where you can actually access these you're going to want to play around on the top of the boat and start adding some balloons to just slightly lift it out of the water so you can actually punch these things out and then once you have it in a good place all you need to do is start putting these medium dynamic foundations and every time you put down a new one just knock out the one that's closer to the back and just keep doing that until all of these are knocked off now i'm going to show you here in a moment what not to do so don't move up front here and knock this out yet because the boat will take off and this just goes to show you how much extra weight that those dynamic foundations had now if this does happen to you all you need to do is build a large dynamic foundation with a large balloon float up to the top and just glide down on top of your boat and start to take out some of the balloons that you have on there so it comes back down in the water now I'm gonna show you exactly how to properly balance out the boat without having these ugly balloons up on top. Now you're gonna need to have some balloons on here to keep it up out of the water for this part. And I also wanna mention that center console piece is gonna come later in the video. So don't worry, I just already built that before explaining this part. Now, the important thing here is that you need to make sure that all the balloons you place down, which in this case, we're doing 16 red balloons, they all have to be evenly spread out. Now, the only two rules of thumb that I actually recommend is making sure that they are not sticking up higher than the floor and that, the, again, they are all evenly spread out from one another. So if you put one on this side, you need to have another one with equal distance on the opposite end. Now, I'm going to leave the pattern like this for just a moment so you can kind of gauge an idea on exactly where these balloons were placed to keep this nice and even up the front. Feel free to pause if you need to, and then we're going to make our way to the back of the boat, which I didn't mean to do that, but we'll still come down here and take a look exactly what this looks like. All right, so you're going to knock the floor out for this too, and the back is only going to require six balloons. The same rule of thumb applies here is just making sure that for every balloon you place down, you want to aim to have them closer to the back than rather than up here, but they all need to be evenly spread apart. Now, once you've got those balloons in, feel free to just go back to your floor pieces that you broke out and just cover this part back up. Now, when you do the front section, if you end up having balloons sticking out from the front, then that's going to let you know that you actually need to readjust them because you don't want them poking up through your floor. Now, to build the center console area, a good rule of thumb is when we go over to our 
wall pieces, we're gonna grab, in this case, I'm gonna do the beachy corner, but you can use any two by two by 12 piece. And a good rule of thumb is we're gonna actually start right where this little corner notch is, and we're gonna nudge it forward four spaces. So we're gonna count one, two, whoop. we're gonna count one, two, three, four, and then we're gonna nudge it in six spaces. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, boom, just like that. And we're gonna get the same thing here. We're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, just like that. Then from here, we're gonna make our way on over to the floor pieces in which we're gonna grab a beachy wide floor too. Now this is gonna be the 16 by 16 by one. And we're just gonna get this thing sitting right up on top here. And we're just gonna wanna make sure that when it turns red like that, we're gonna nudge it forward four spaces. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a nice little overhang towards the front end there, just like that. Now let's jump in the water and see what it looks like. Now we're gonna go over to our floor pieces and where we're gonna actually grab some of the thin floors. Now I highly recommend using the thin floors that you've used for your boat. So in this case, if you are doing the Beachy Boulevard set, let's stick with that theme. And we're gonna grab the two by 12 by one and we're just gonna drop one of these just like this and another one on the opposite side. And then from here, we're gonna drop one right up the middle, just like this. And then we're gonna do a second one right up on top of that, just like this. All right, so this video is fast approaching about 45 minutes. So we're gonna talk through the modifications and how I added the driver's seat to this thing. So all I did was I actually added a few more of those planks stacked up around the center console area. I added some lights up above, which can be found under the car parts. This is actually the angled light bar. I added a couple more light bars down here on the opposite ends of this outside of the center console. And then I have a large driver's seat in a medium passenger seat, which it looks like it's a little offset. So make sure you line those up. And then from there, all I did was I actually put another one uh, border floor around the back here to just thicken that back part. And then last but not least, we have a chest for all of our fishing needs. If you followed all these steps, you now have this beautiful center console boat in your Lego Fortnite world. Get together with some friends, go fishing, have some fun. And if you found value in this video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe with notifications on so you never miss another one of my tutorials again. This is Haskin signing off. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next one.